Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. Today, we're taking a look at the creepiest things people have witnessed but haven't shared anywhere else. So, sit back, relax, and join us on this journey into the unknown. Don't forget to subscribe. Back in 2018, my girlfriend and I lived in a mobile home that we were renting, and we decided we would go look at a house to buy for our first house, we were both 20. I had bought a 2005 Harley Davidson a few months prior, and she loved to ride, so we decided to take the bike, so we geared up to leave. After we got on the bike, I had an uneasy feeling, so I got off and inspected her gear since she was far less experienced than me. Sure enough, her helmet was super loose, so I tightened it down for her, and we headed out. We made it about half a mile when a F-550 company truck hit us head on. We slid about 100 feet and got rushed to the hospital. I had permanent knee damage, a concussion, and A and a road rash on my knee, back, arm, and buttocks. She shattered her arm and needed surgery. Her helmet was destroyed in the accident. Fast forward to March of 2020, and we are well off in a house we bought in 2019. I bought another bike, I had a 2018 Camaro, and we just had our sweet baby girl in January. Life is great, and we healed up great, besides my knee damage. Well, I was getting off of the car in March, oil field, and I was in the Camaro. I was driving and kind of had a vision of me in a terrible accident, so when I got to a red light, I waited a few seconds after the light turned green before taking off. I took off, and a car ran the red light, smoked my front wheel doing 75, and totaled the car. If I had taken off like normal, he would have boned me, and I can't say I'm alive. If I hadn't tightened her helmet down, I can't say she would be here today. I have no idea how I knew, but I did. It terrifies me to this day, but I'm so thankful. One day when I was about 10, my mom told my brothers and I to quickly and quietly get ready because we were going for a walk. When we left our house, I turned and saw someone looking out the window at us. My mom later explained that she had had an uneasy feeling lately. The dog was afraid to go in the basement, and my mom noticed random things go missing, food from the fridge, a spare key by the door, pictures out of frames. That day, she went down to the basement to switch the laundry over to the dryer. As she walked back up the stairs, she heard the dryer door open. She went down and saw the clothes on the ground, put them back in, and started the machine again. She walked back up the stairs and heard the dryer door open again, but this time she also heard someone giggle and whisper. She shut the basement door, put a chair in front of it, and when she went to grab the large knife she kept for protection, it was gone. I told my mom there was someone watching from the window. I know, keep walking. We went to my grandmother's house, and my mom went back. The police had arrested two squatters who had lived in the basement for a couple of weeks. There was a second room in the basement that was mainly old wooden furniture that belonged to the landlord. When my mom went inside, she saw the basement door open, the chair flung across the room, and the bedrooms were all torn apart, the mattresses cut. We moved not long after. Maybe seven or eight years ago, I was getting changed in my room, ready for school, and I could hear my mom in the hallway getting ready for work. I leave my bedroom and head to the kitchen to grab my lunch for the day, when all of a sudden I feel, what I then expected, my mom tapping me on the back and saying my name. Of course I turned around to say good morning, but no one was there, literally no one. I definitely heard someone call my name and touch me on the back. I was pretty creeped out, so I called out to my mother to let her know what just happened but she wasn't anywhere in the house, so I looked outside and saw that her car was gone. A couple of minutes later, the landline rings, and it's my mother. She called to let me know that she left early for a meeting and that my lunch was on the side. It still creeps me out thinking about it. I 100% heard someone else in the house moving around, and I'm certain someone said my name play as day and tapped me on the shoulder. This happened last summer and still freaks me out, but I didn't want to tell anyone because they'd just dismiss it. I was working at a bakery, and around 2 p.m., it started getting really quiet. Only a handful of people were coming in, so I was starting to clear things away, we close at 3 on weekends, when I suddenly had this weird urge to look out the window. I didn't stop cleaning, but I looked up at the glass display, and the opposite street was completely frozen. People were still walking in front of the shop and cars were driving in the lane nearest to us, but on the other side and in the other lane, it was all frozen, no traffic or anything, just people frozen mid-step. This lasted a second or two before things started moving again. I barely spoke for the rest of my shift, trying to figure out if everything had really stopped like that. I've seen another glitch since then fairly recently, laying out in my garden, watching a bird fly past me, quite close, 
when it seemed to disappear behind a bush that was on the other side of the garden. The bird seemed nearly as big as the bush because of the perspective, as it was flying within about a meter of me, but it looked like it had flown behind the bush, which was at least five meters away. Regardless, the image of all those people frozen still sends a shiver down my spine. I want to say that back in 2014, my girlfriend and I went to our friend's mom's house in a pretty remote area. Her mother had grown up in this house, and her father had died in the house a few years earlier, but there was never any sign of paranormal activity. We play drinking games for a while, and then eventually it's time for everyone to nod off. Friends go to their room, and my girlfriend and I take the grandparents' old room. There's an old rotary phone in there, not connected to anything, we didn't know this yet. In the middle of the night, it starts ringing, and it's not subtle, it's super loud, like wake up everyone in the house kind of loud. Rings four or five times, then stops. Okay, sure, maybe someone was calling the house. I'd cow this family rolls. Five minutes later, it does it again. Okay, now what if someone is trying to get through? Five minutes pass. Rings again, okay, F this, I'm already hung over. I'm just going to pick this up and see what's what. Silence, dead silence. Turn the light on and see that the phone isn't even plugged into anything. Next morning, I'm passenger number one on the struggle bus. We tell our friends to check out that phone. The girl who lives there says that phone hasn't worked in years and it's just decorative. Hell, she has never heard it ring ever. They didn't hear it last night, and we were only one room over. I still don't know what that was, and our friends refuse to believe it happened because that phone has never rang, and nobody, not even her mom or stepfather, has heard it, and they have lived there since 2012. One time during university, I was in the middle of an end of term rush trying to get assignments done. Night 1, I went to bed at about 4 am and woke up at 8 am, night 2, I didn't sleep at all. So the story takes place around 2 pm on day 3, which means I have now been awake for 30 straight hours and only had 4 hours of sleep in the past 3 days. I was working in the common room of our college on a group project with a couple of my friends, one male and one female, when, all of a sudden, I got really cold. I feel it in my bones, kind of cold. I told my friends that I was going to go outside for a walk to try and warm up and get my blood flowing a bit. So I walked outside, and, being a busy university campus, there were a bunch of people walking around. Then, as I was walking, the faces of every person around me disappeared for a moment. Like they were just blank faces. Then their faces came back after about 10 seconds, but it wasn't their actual faces. They all had the same faces. Every male looked exactly like my older brother, and every female looked exactly like my friend that I had just been working on the project with. At that point, I kind of freaked out, so I just walked to the library, still seeing the same two people everywhere, went up to a floor with some comfy chairs, sat down, and passed out immediately. I didn't wake up until a security guard tapped me on the leg and told me they were closing the upper floors soon, at 9 p.m. I had just left all my stuff back in the common room, but I had like 30 missed texts and a few missed calls from my friends. The last message was at like 7 p.m. and just said, okay, I guess you aren't coming back, so I'll just take your stuff home and bring it to you tomorrow. I told my friends some of what had happened as an explanation for why I didn't come back. I left the bit about people's faces disappearing and reappearing as the same two faces out, though. Basically, my story was that I nearly passed out during my walk, so I decided that I really needed to lay down and have a nap before something bad happened. My freshman year dorm was slash is notorious for being haunted. Supposedly, it was a hospital run by nuns before it was bought by the school. My best friends moved in their freshman year to a newly renovated wing. The first week, we all hung out in their room, played Xbox, watched football, and did other normal college guy things. After a week, the power went out in their room one morning. They call maintenance, who can't understand the situation because the power is on in every other room down the wing. Maintenance calls an electrician, who comes the next day. After poking around in the ceiling, he says to my buddy, so you never had power, right? My friend says no and explains how everything had been working fine until the day before. The electrician then points out that there is no wiring leading into the room from the hall, where it should be. According to him, when they did the renovation, they forgot to wire their room completely. To this day, we have not figured out how the electricity worked for that first week. Valentine's Day a couple of years ago. My friend, Anthony, comes over to spend the night and have a guy's night, we are in high school, nothing happened, nor gay. Anyway, we get bored and decide to go out for a walk at, like, 11.30 at night. We're walking to a gas station by my house, and along the way there is a little green belt next to a couple of buildings, 
a construction corporate office of some sort, a hotel, and the gas station being the last thing. In the construction building parking lot, there is a jeep with the lights on inside and the driver door open. We also see some lights turn on from inside the building and a sign that says no trespassing. Side note, the lights outside are flickering, just like in the movies, it's creepy as hell. Well, anyway, Anthony and I, being good noodles, decide to investigate and maybe rescue somebody. As soon as we are about to open the door to the building, we hear the jeep's door just slam. It scared the absolute shit out of us. And there's this guy sitting in the driver's seat. There was absolutely no expression on his face. Just effing staring dead ahead with no look behind his eyes. Creepy. Anthony and I slowly panic on the inside and decide to just walk away and leave. The dude doesn't even turn his head to watch us leave. We then run as fast as we can to the hotel to try and hide. We get inside, and we tell the person working the front desk that we have family there and we just went to the gas station. She lets us in, and we are looking outside from a window in the lobby, and it's the effing guy just pacing about in the parking lot. We are freaking the f out, but for some reason we didn't tell the front desk. Or anyone? We were just panicking for ourselves. After about 30 minutes, the guy gets into his car and leaves. So, we do too. We walk to the gas station and get some soda. We are walking back to my house, and we ask ourselves, where did the guy come from? How did he get into the car? Was he in the green belt right next to the building? What was he doing? So, being dumb teenagers, we decide to sneak into the green belt and see if we can find any clues. We are creeping along the trees, and suddenly we hear frantic panting. Like an angry bear, let out loud, frequent grunts. They get louder and louder, and closer and closer. The ground shakes ever so slightly with each groan and stomp this thing is making. We book it the F out of there. We could hear that the creature was caught off guard by us running. We make it back out onto the street, run over to the other side, and find a hiding spot. We are watching the tree line and lo and behold, the same creepy guy walks out casually. I mean casually. Like nothing had ever happened. This dude just walked out of a tree brush at midnight after the earth was quaking like nothing had ever happened. Anyway, we make it home without him finding us, and the next morning we get the wild idea to go back and search during the day. We find a storm drain and decide to go in it. All of a sudden, we start to see sunlight, thinking it was the other end of the tunnel. I speed up. As I'm running up to the end, the sunlight starts illuminating the walls, and I see a language I don't understand. I walk further, and I come upon a natural door. The tunnel opened up, and it was a room. There was an opening in the ceiling where there were some metal bars, I assumed to let the water fall in, and moonlight for what the guy was using them for, and in the middle of the room was a stick. A big stick, a random fucking, freestanding stick with a bird's nest, almost at the top of the stick. And in this nest was an item. I step closer to investment, and it's a shrunken head. As I step away in horror, I hear the crackling of some leaves. Confused as f as to why there would be leaves in there, I look down and find palm leaves. There are lots of palm leaves and palm tree branches. I live in central Texas, where there are no palm trees. I have constant deja vu, but even borderline on just pure predictions from dreams or even waking up randomly and immediately saying something in my head and it happening seconds later. For example, in high school, I woke up randomly one night, like one of those half awakened but still conscious moments, and randomly in my head, I said, I wish my computer was on. I don't know why. I wasn't thinking of anything at the time, but it popped into my head like an epiphany, and not two seconds later, I heard my laptop start up. It was closed, and I had been asleep for at least five hours. I closed it and immediately went to bed. Another example, same scenario, I wake up randomly in some sort of half sleep, but only this time, again, it pops into my head, the doorbell will ring. Two seconds later, the doorbell rings. As a last example, I also get deja vu badly. I remember dreaming about meeting a girl at a beach. When I or anyone else wakes up from a dream that's not overly intense, usually you just forget it, like a whatever type of thing. Fast forward a year, and I am meeting this girl with the same background I saw in my dream, the colors fit perfectly with the scenery and everything. All I can do when it does happen is suppress myself, because if I start blurting out these things when they happen, people will call me crazy. Things like this happen a lot, I don't know why or how, but sometimes it really freaks me out. When I was 16, my first real boyfriend broke up with me. I was devastated. I mean, I know I was 16, but I just knew he was the man I was going to marry. We had been together for about a year. So I'm in my room, lights out, bawling, wearing out my journey albums, wanting to end it all. My mom was out of town at my granddad's hunting cabin. 200 miles away, 
No phone, this is before cells. Yeah, if Journey albums didn't clue you in, this tells you I am old. My poor dad was at a loss. Mom always dealt with the emotional stuff. He knocked on my door, handed me a jug of wine, and split. He was really strict with me, so this was nuts. I had never had wine before. I drank so much. It didn't help. Made it worse. Now I was crying and sick. I eventually pass out. My mom shows up at like 2 a.m. He comes right to my room and wakes me up to make sure I'm okay. It turns out she sat up out of a sound sleep at the cabin and just knew I needed her. She drove down that dark mountain in the middle of the night because she just couldn't shake that feeling. She called it shining. Background information. I am physically disabled and use a wheelchair. I can't really move my arms or legs. When this story took place, my fiancé and I were living in a small bedroom at her parents' house while we were in the process of buying a house. One night, around 2 a.m., I woke up my fiancé and asked her to help me take a sip of water. She couldn't immediately find my water bottle on the nightstand, so she said, I'm going to turn the light on. Watch your eyes. As she reached for the lamp beside our bed, another lamp across the room turned on by itself. When the light turned on, her hand was still hovering in the air, on its way to the lamp by our bed. Both of us looked at each other with complete confusion, but as it was the middle of the night, we didn't spend much time investigating. She got out of bed and turned the light across the room off. The next morning, we were in the bedroom joking about how we have a ghost now. I said out loud, Dear Mr. Ghost, if you are really in our house, prove it to us by turning the lamp on again. We waited for a few seconds, but nothing happened. My fiancé left the room to use the bathroom. I opened my phone and responded to a few text messages. All of a sudden, my fiancé came back into the room and stopped dead in her tracks. Very funny. Did you have my dad do that? She said. I looked up at her, confused. She pointed behind me, and I turned to see that the ghost lamp had once again turned on by itself. After interrogating her entire family and realizing that no one had turned the light on, my fiancé threw away the haunted lamp. Well, this is not something I saw, but something I experienced. I'm 16, almost 17 now, but when I was maybe 3 to 4 years old, I had vivid dreams of a golden man coming into my room at night, talking to me, and taking me somewhere. He wasn't like a gold statue, but he had a sort of golden aura. I remember almost perfectly him taking me places that only later in life I would visit. The first place I remember going was what seemed like a Middle Eastern country. Very sandy and rocky. I was there with my family. Then it was just my mom and dad, and there were these above ground tombs. Not like chambers, but like the bodies of people were buried above ground and covered in rocks. We were walking through it with other people, like it was a tourist site. I can only remember being absolutely blinded by light. This place I have not visited before, and I have not since. The second place he took me was very different. It was very, very green. It was like a zoo, but it did not have any animals besides lions. There were no bars, nothing modern. Everything was made completely out of stone. I remember us being up on a stone wall, looking into a field. There were like stone covers in the field with lions napping in them. I remember the man taking me down the wall and bringing me right up to a lion. After this, I woke up. One year later, my family visited the exact place, minus the lions. I have the pictures too, but I don't know where they are. I had started to tell my mom about this, and instead of saying, oh wow, honey, very creative dream, she believed me and asked me if the man scared me. Me. I was not scared of the man when I was sleeping, but when I woke up and thought about it, four-year-old me was scared. She told me to tell the man that I was scared and that if I wanted to, I should tell him to leave me alone. I don't remember when after this I saw him again, but I do remember the last time I saw him. He took me to a super bright place with large pillars of Greek architecture and ruins. There were people walking around on the street. Here, I cannot remember what happened, but when he took me home, I asked him to leave me alone because I was scared. He said that it was okay, and I never saw him again. Two notes. I grew up and live in the US, and the man was not western looking at all. He was Asian and dressed like a warrior sometimes and a monk other times. I was four years old at the time, so I had never seen either of these things before. I also had no experience with Roman architecture, so I do not believe either of those things could have been created by my subconscious based on prior knowledge. True story. I work as a real estate videographer. I go into old homes, new homes, and all homes. One house I went into, I started shooting, and as I'm shooting, I'm looking around and noticing a lot of frames with police badges and such. I walked into another room and looked down at the camera. When I did that, I saw a pair of legs walk by from the other room, 
The living room. I had informed the agent and the homeowner before shooting that everyone needed to be upstairs while shooting because I work pretty fast. After seeing someone walk by, I went into the room to say to the person, I'm recording downstairs. I checked the room, then checked the others. I then called the agent upstairs and asked if anyone else was here. She replied no. I shrugged it off and moved on. When the job was done and I was walking out to the car with the agent, I mentioned what happened. She got stone-faced and wide-eyed. She then told me that the husband was an old police officer who recently died. The reason I mentioned the police stuff is because the legs I saw walk by me looked like someone was wearing black police officer pants. I think she was a little miffed at me because she would now have to disclose that the house could be haunted, by law. Me and a buddy were in high school and driving home from a movie, and we were on a very isolated road, and this guy was standing in the middle of the road. We swerved to miss him. Both got out and walked to where he was standing next to his truck. He said he needed help, so I said we would go to the closest gas station and call for help for him. He starts to insist very adamantly that we don't do that. He just wanted us to come see him and help him. He never left the side of the bed of his truck. He just kept saying, come see, please. I need help. Me and my buddy started to move closer, but we saw how creepy all this was. We kind of looked at each other and were like, nope, and took off, running back to the car. As we were running, he just yelled, please don't call anyone, just come see and help me. As I got in the car and took off, I looked in the rearview mirror and just saw him standing next to his truck, never moving. We drove a mile or so out of sight, turned around, and headed back, and he was gone. I called the cops as soon as we got home. This was before cell phones. The happiest thing that's ever happened to me. I'm almost positive we dodged a serial killer or something. In high school, I was at my boyfriend's house hanging out when his parents called and asked if he could pick them up from the bar, as they had too much to drink. I was falling asleep during the movie we had been watching, so I said I didn't want to go along for the ride, plus, his drunk parents were a nightmare. He'd told me before his house was haunted that he'd feel past pets climb into his bed and how his current dog would refuse to go into his mom's room and bark and growl at the door. He said it was because his mom hoarded ashes, pets and family, and was always grieving even small deaths in the family. Anyway, he left. I took the car out of the garage and left. Maybe 10 minutes later I hear the car pull up, the garage door open and close, and the house door from the garage open and close, and footsteps come up the stairs. When I heard all the doors, I had left the bedroom to greet them, and I'd even heard the footsteps on the stairs from the open doorway, not even 10 feet away, but nobody ever came to the top of the stairs. I walked over, looked down the stairs, and saw nothing. I went down the stairs, and I had my hand poised to open the garage, but I felt sick to my stomach, so I just went back up and hid in bed. They didn't even come home for another 20 minutes. If I could drive and had a car, I would have noped out of there so hard. I had one story a minute ago, now I have two. The first story was about 10 years ago, when I was living with some friends and their four kids. One night I was babysitting while my friends had a date night. It was probably about 9 PM, the kids were all wound down, and we were in the living room watching TV. I stepped into the master bedroom to grab something for one of them. I wasn't gone for more than 10 to 15 seconds, but when I returned, the youngest boy, only 10 months old and barely able to crawl, was missing from the living room. Just then I heard him screaming and followed the sound through the kitchen and dining room to a back bedroom, where he was just sitting on the floor in the middle of the pitch black room, freaking the hell out. The other kids, ages 6, 4, and 2, seemingly hadn't moved from their spots in the few seconds I was gone and were able to offer me no explanation. As if the event itself wasn't creepy enough, it's amplified by the fact that their grandfather died in that very bedroom the previous year. My second story is a short one, but funny, it just happened right before I started writing this. I'm laying in bed alone in my office reading all of these scary stories, and it's safe to say I'm getting the good old creeped out feeling. After reading a particularly creepy one, I just had to give the room a good glance over to make sure nothing was lurking in the shadows. The last thing to catch my eye is the video baby monitor about a foot from my face on the side table. On it, my six-month-old son was suddenly wide awake, staring right at the camera in complete silence. When I was a kid, I lived in this really old house with my parents and older sister. I was 12 by the time we moved out into a much newer house, but by the time this happened, I'd guess I would have been between 6 and 10. There are three different things that made this house creepy. The cellar. My dad kept a chest freezer down there, so every now and again I'd have to go and fetch something, which I hated. The parts of the cellar that we used were lit just fine, but right at the back of the cellar was a small, 
weird room we rarely went into because it was pitch black and the floor foundation was sunk down and creepy as hell. The few times I ever did go in that room, I was overwhelmed with this cold feeling and an absolute silence that made me feel like I couldn't move. Next was the attic. It had been converted into a bedroom, my bedroom, but there was a crawl space type thing left attached right near where my parents decided to put my bed. Some nights, when I was trying to fall asleep, I could hear scratching from behind the crawl space door. It didn't happen often, so I hoped it was maybe a pigeon or something that found its way in and nestled in there. That was a comforting thought until things got worse. Every so often, I was kept awake by my fear of something I saw in my room. At the top of the stairs, right next to my toy box, I would see a creature. I was terrified when it was there, obviously, and, yeah, I'd forget about it during the days but would always worry when it came to bedtime again. I have never known how to describe it, but I guess I thought it was some sort of gremlin? It was really dark, and all I can really recall is that it was small, like a child, and had huge round eyes that were just holes, like empty sockets. The worst part of it is that I never saw a mouth or saw it speak, but I would hear it whispering all the time, even if I shut my eyes, which, as a kid, usually makes bad things go away, right? I could never make out what it was saying, aside from a few times where it asked me to go with it, like come with me. In my absolute horror, I'd often bolt past it downstairs to cry and scream at my dad and sister, accusing them of teasing me and playing a trick or something, but they always seemed unsettled, to the point where I really believed it wasn't their doing. Anyway, it happened less and less, and when my sister moved out, I took her room and never looked back. Eventually, we moved out. Years later, when my sister and I were both in our teens or twenties, my mom decided to admit to us that she hated that house because she and my dad would often hear a child crying in the attic or cellar, even when my sister and I weren't there at all. I still think about it sometimes. I'm not a superstitious or spiritual person at all and often try to find the logical answer, but it has always creeped me out because it felt really damn real at the time. To this day, I don't know if this was reality or a very vivid dream, but when I was 12, I woke up late at night to go to the bathroom. When I finished, I was washing my hands and looking in the mirror. Now, when I did this, something felt wrong. I couldn't figure it out, but the person looking back at me was not me. It was hard to describe, it looked exactly like me, but something was just off. I stared at it for like 30 minutes, just trying to figure out what was wrong. Eventually I started getting filled with this feeling of unbearable dread, and I wanted to walk away, but I couldn't. For some reason, I couldn't stop staring at the thing in the mirror. After 45 straight minutes of staring, that feeling of dread turned into complete terror. I had to force myself to walk away from the mirror and go back to sleep. Nowadays that shit still haunts me, and I can't even look in the direction of a mirror without getting that feeling of terror all over again. I don't know what it was that was looking at me in that mirror, but it wasn't me. And to anyone wondering, yes, the lights were on, so it wasn't that optical illusion of looking at yourself in a mirror in the dark. This is one of several weird things that have happened to me. It was December 23, 2018, and my roommate, who has been my best friend for over 10 years, told me that we should open presents the next morning because she knew I would be busy with my family from the evening of December 24, 25th. And since I love to sleep in, she lets me know that she will wake me up as soon as she does, no matter how early. I'm like, okay, cool, that's fine. So that night I'm sleeping, and at about 3 to 4 a.m. I hear my door open and footsteps coming towards my bed. I know my friend's footsteps, so I thought it was her. I tell her I'm still sleeping, so I'll be up as soon as possible. She giggles and plays with my hair like she sometimes does, and then I hear her walk back and close the door. I get up like two minutes later, thinking she's probably started to make coffee or breakfast. When I walk out, everything is quiet, and the only thing on is the Christmas tree. I go to check on my friend, and she is passed the F out. I'm creeped out, so I just go back to bed and try to sleep. When I finally do wake up again, at like 9-ish, I ask her if she woke up any earlier than me. She said she had only woken up like 30-ish minutes ago and was letting me sleep before waking up. She also said that she took the pain medication and sleeping pills she was using at the time, which also made her sleep deeply. I tell her what happened, and she's creeped out but not surprised because of all the other stories I have about weird things happening to me. Two years ago, I was sitting on my back porch around 7 p.m., and it was just getting dark, with only light coming from the light bulbs above my back door. I remember I was doing some kind of homework for my biology class. I thought I heard some kind of animal sound, so I looked around my backyard to make sure my dog was still inside. When I went around the corner of the house towards the gate that connects to the front yard, there was some kind of creature. I thought maybe a deer or something, 
as they're pretty common in the area, but after a second, I realized the thing was a good foot taller than me. Considering I'm about 5 feet 10 inches, this was pretty weird. I backed away slowly while trying to make out more details, but I couldn't really see much more than a silhouette. I think it jumped over the gate and ran off, but whatever it was, it didn't make any sound I could hear, and it looked more like it stepped right over the gate rather than jumped. I got inside and locked everything that could be locked, obviously, I was scared shitless. I was driving back to my dorm in Florida, I'm from NC, so it was an all-night drive. I was just cruising along a 95, going about 80, when I started to skid, and I quickly lost control of my truck. Then I was slammed into the underpass of the bridge and saw the entire front of my truck flatten against the wall. In the same second, I felt like every bone was broken in my body, and the last thing I saw was the airbag deploying as my face rushed forward. Immediately after this, I flew straight out of bed and into the railing at the foot of it. My roommate was there and grabbed me and made sure I was okay. He said I had just been sleeping, and all of a sudden I had lurched forward and slammed my head into the rail. I was so shaken by this because it felt so real. I insisted that we go out to my truck just because it was so real. Everything was fine, and nothing was wrong with it. This was at about midnight, so my roommate was pretty concerned that I felt so strongly about the whole thing and suggested I go to the counselor in the morning. I agreed to go, and we were walking back to the dorm when his phone started going off. His father is in tears, barely able to talk without breaking down, as he told my roommate that my roommate's brother had been found dead in his vehicle under an overpass near his home in Missouri. A roommate said something to his dad about how he couldn't believe he had been speeding because he always drove slowly and said his tires had been fine last week when he drove them. His dad was still crying but stopped and just asked how he knew the tires had caused him to skid, and he was speeding. We never told his mom about it because his dad did not take it well when we tried to explain. It was about 3 a.m. outside the local county jail. I was working on a national news story and was setting up a live shot for the next morning news show. A homeless man approaches from around the corner, screaming nonsense into the night. He comes into my personal space and asks questions about the lights and camera, but I realized he was either very mentally ill or inebriated, and we couldn't understand each other. I tried to kindly shoo him away, but he wouldn't leave. I was set up next to a payphone, which seemed to be the main reason for his visit. He started having dozens of conversations on the phone. As far as I know, there was never another person on the line. Then I hear something that has haunted me ever since. The man on the phone, who has been very shifty, suddenly freezes and, in a clear but frightened voice, asks. Are you the reason I'm scared to death? Then he answered his own question with a chilling whisper, yes, we are. I'm guessing he was schizophrenic, but the way he spoke in the other voice creeped me out big time. It didn't sound like his voice was speaking. Also, something about the sudden plurality of voices in his head shook me up. Several months ago, I had a random vision come into my head where I was looking through the peephole in my apartment door, and I saw two creepy people staring back at me on the other side. This was very vivid in my head, with the exact details of my apartment's outer hallway. It came out of nowhere and actually gave me chills, but I didn't talk about it with anyone. Several months later, around the start of quarantine, I was watching the movie Arrival with my girlfriend late at night. We were googling the ending explanations because it was slightly mind-fucking, and I heard this noise coming from my front door. I quickly ran over and made sure it was locked, then checked through the peephole and saw a crackhead lady trying to open my door from the other side. I swung her away by banging on the door, and she walked further down the hall to try other doors. I was really scared because I was intoxicated and overthinking things, even though I was safe anyway. A few minutes went by, and she made her way back down the hallway towards me and came back into view of the peephole. My girlfriend was calling a friend and explaining what was happening, and my instinct was to shush her as soon as the lady reappeared, but my loud shush actually got the lady's attention, and she instantly looked up at me because she knew I was on the other side staring at her. This gave me chills, but then, to make matters worse, a few seconds later, a man with her that I didn't originally see caught up, and she whispered to him, and he looked up at the peephole with her. In that moment, I realized that I was currently experiencing the exact vision that I had many months ago, with two creepy people staring at me through my peephole. This sent chills down my spine again, because it was the freakiest form of deja vu I had ever experienced. It was as similar to my vision as it could have been. Spoiler about the movie Arrival if you haven't seen it. What made the situation even scarier to me was that the basic premise of Arrival is being able to see into your future. I'm glad the door was locked. I was asleep when a loud knock woke me. I'm not one to get up and investigate like people always do in horror films. I laid awake, being very still for a long time, listening for the axe murderer. 
I fall back asleep. Sometime later, I am awakened again by a loud knock. I live in a rural area, so I think it might be an animal. I gather courage and bring the big dog, I have three, with me to explore. We look around but find nothing. Except it distinctly smells like something electrical is burning. I look all over but find nothing. However, it smells the strongest in my office, but I can't pinpoint it. I uneasily go back to bed. Once again, I am awakened by three loud knocks. This time the big dog hears it too, is startled awake by the sound, and is now on high alert. I go looking around again. The electric smell is strong in the office. I hear faint crackling and popping. I found that one of the little dogs had peed on a power strip that was on the floor and shorted it out. The carpet underneath was starting to burn. I'm not one for believing in strange phenomena, but something seemed like it was trying to warn me and save me from an impending house fire. We had a few day old new baby who was very jaundiced and crying a lot. We were taking him to his pediatrician daily. After three hard screaming days and nights, he finally fell asleep in my arms in the night, but he wasn't drinking or wetting. I was exhausted and rocked him in my arms for a few hours while he slept, and my husband finally got some sleep in our bedroom. At dawn, I hear barking in our backyard. We lived on a hill, and our backyard was cut out of the hill behind us, with huge retaining walls on three sides and a six-foot gate. We had a German shepherd known for escaping, but not from this yard. I went outside to investigate the barking. There was a large, fluffy black dog in our backyard who stopped barking when I came out. I was confused about how he got in the backyard and had never seen the black dog before. I woke my husband and asked him to get this dog out of the yard. I had the baby in my arms, so I didn't want to do it myself. The husband is groggy and confused as to what I was asking him. He went to the backyard with our shepherd and came back in. There was no black dog. Am I sure I saw a dog? Yes. Saw and heard. I checked, and there was no black dog. The gate was locked. As the husband was tired but awake, something in me woke up, and I told him that I was worried about the baby. Since you're up, why don't we take the baby to the emergency room? Our son was admitted and stayed for five weeks, having three different operations during his stay. Long story short, unknown genetic condition. The doctor said that we got our son in just in time. He wasn't crying because he had given up and was in the process of dying. If we had waited any longer, he would have died in my arms that morning, at any moment. I swear, I saw and heard that black dog. I remember him as clear as day. I'm not sure if he was an angel or death, but I am forever grateful. When I was about 21, I had a dream where my grandmother stopped by where I worked, along with her long deceased husband, both dressed all in white, to tell me goodbye. The feeling in the dream was that she had died and was saying goodbye in that way. Grandma had been in a nursing home for years, we weren't close, and, to be honest, I hadn't given much thought to her for weeks. And here she was, saying goodbye. I had the dream while sleeping in, around 10.30 am, and I immediately called my dad to tell him of my dream and what I thought it meant. He was traveling and not at home, but he just kind of agreed it was strange, and he'd look into it when he got back home the next day. He got home and saw his answering machine light blinking. He said that right then, he knew what it meant. It was the nursing home that left a message about his mom passing the day before. The time of death was right around the very minute I was having my dream. I can't explain it. But it convinced me there's something out there, some connection between souls, something about death, that science hasn't come close to explaining. My father died from ALS in 2017, when I was 19 years old. He died at home in a hospital bed provided, which was directly below my bedroom. He couldn't walk up the stairs towards his final days, so he used the bed downstairs. The first time he used it was the last. As he died at night, we had to wait until the next morning for the undertakers to take his body. It was summer at around 6 am in the morning, and I was lying on my back in bed. I hadn't slept as I was torn apart by what happened the previous night. As it was summer, it was bright outside, and the sun had fully risen about an hour beforehand. I have blackout blinds in my room, which block out all light. At around 6 am, I saw a really bright ball of light that looked like it came from the floor and shot upwards to the ceiling, where it disappeared. I saw it also reflect on my mirrors and the TV screen opposite them. I'm normally quite a reasonable person, so I started speculating about what it could be. First, I thought it was a headlight from a car driving past. But since the sun had completely risen, the headlights wouldn't need to be on. And if they were on, they wouldn't shine into my room as my bedroom has those blackout blinds, plus it was too bright outside from the sun for the headlight to travel and be seen. Around the same time, I heard my mom come upstairs after sitting next to my dad all night. 
She said she felt hot and like she was having an out-of-body experience. I'll never know what it was, but a wild speculation would be a soul departing. Around seven years ago, my grandfather passed away from cancer. I was never super close to him, as he was a fairly distant person, mostly living in his own world. I always respected him, though, and I knew he was a very smart and unique person. He was also an excellent gardener, and he would always wear this straw sun hat to cover his face when he was outside. We never had a funeral for him, which still makes me sad, but for some reason it didn't happen. Something I'll never forget happened a few months after his passing. My mom decided to bring my sister and me on a road trip down to San Francisco. From where I live, this is a pretty long drive, and we stopped at rest stops multiple times on the way. At the second rest stop, my mom and sister went to the bathroom, and while I waited for them, I just sat in the grass next to this ramp down to the bathroom. I was looking around, enjoying the scenery, when I looked up and saw my grandpa. Sun hat and everything, in the same stance he always was in with his hands in his pockets, just staring out at the horizon. He then looked over at me and was smiling, and I was so startled by seeing him that I did a double take, and when I looked back again, he was gone. No one was there anymore. I don't generally believe in ghosts or spirits, but this experience has always left me thinking about the possibility of something else out there. About a year ago, I was in the car by myself on the freeway. It was a clear, sunny day. I was driving about 20 yards or so behind a semi. I glanced down for a second, literally a second, to adjust the volume on the stereo. When I looked up, the sky had gone completely gray, and there was a mist of fog floating in the air. The semi in front of me had rolled over on its side and was sliding quickly backwards towards me. I knew I didn't have time to avoid it because I was still going 65 miles per hour and there was a car behind me, so I couldn't slam on the brakes. My breath caught in my throat, and I felt panic rising, and I was completely overwhelmed by the knowledge that I was about to die. In that split second, I saw my daughter's face in my mind and felt the weight of knowing I wouldn't see her grow up, and it was the worst thing I've ever felt, terror, panic, devastation, desperation, remorse. It felt like time slowed down as I watched the semi slide towards me, and I started to suck in a breath of air, I think probably to scream, and I blinked. Suddenly, the semi was upright in its own lane, still about 20 yards in front of me, driving completely normally. The sky was sunny, the fog was gone, and it was like nothing had happened. My hands were still gripping my steering wheel so hard that it hurt, and my heart was pounding. I started shaking uncontrollably, pulled over on the side of the freeway, and almost threw up. I called my husband and told him what had happened, and he suggested that I'd either hallucinated or gone through an actual fog patch, and the sunlight refracted off the fog to create a trick of the light, making me think I saw something that wasn't there. But there was no fog anywhere after I blinked. The only thing in my rearview mirror was the car that had been behind me. I can still picture it in my head, clear as day. I was not ill, not on drugs, and have never hallucinated. I have no logical explanation, but there's a part of me that thinks that I died that day in an alternate reality and that the experience was so intense that I experienced it in this reality as well, or that the universe was sending me a warning. I know how ridiculous that sounds, but I don't know how else to reconcile this experience. I'm a very logical and skeptical person, and this shook me to my core. I do not drive behind semis anymore. Ever. Every child on the street I grew up on vividly remembers a child who used to play football with us during the summer of 2004. We all remember Ali, his parents, and even his old pre-colonial house at the end of the street. He was very eccentric, a true drama queen, but otherwise, he was a nice kid. Ali moved at the end of the summer, and his house was demolished by the new owner, who wanted something more modern. During the summer of 2014, 10 years later and an ocean away from home, I saw Ali and his parents at a park in Buenos Aires. They looked like they had not aged a day. I had the most creepy and unexplainable conversation of my life. I felt perfectly normal and relaxed with them, despite the fact that they should have been a decade older, but as soon as I left the park, I was pretty sure I chit-chatted with three ghosts or three zombies while drinking tea and eating a charcuterie board. When I got home, I was freaking the F out and called several old friends. They told me that many of them experienced the same thing and that after making inquiries, they learned that Ali and his parents were killed in a car crash a few days after moving. I had to stay back at school for a double detention. It was in the winter, so it got quite dark, but obviously, I wasn't that late, it must have been like 5 pm or so. I was walking home past the cemetery, and I passed this guy dragging a woman by her wrist down the road, and I mean, properly dragging, she wasn't really moving her legs. The woman was wearing the type of thing you'd wear to a nightclub, red high heels and a purple and pink body fit dress. As they passed, I got a glimpse at her face, and I swear it wasn't human, 
She had massive red lips like a cartoon fish, a tiny, tiny nose like an incredibly small one barely protruding from her face, and the widest pupils I've ever seen. She made brief eye contact with me as I passed and looked terrified. Looking back on it now, I reckon it was just someone with a lot of bad plastic surgery who was absolutely off her tits on drugs and being dragged home by a shitty boyfriend or something, but at the time, I must have been like 13? I thought I'd seen an alien or something. This is my brother's story, but I'll share it anyway. My brother went to school one day, and during one of his classes, his teacher got a call. He talked for a second, then hung up, said, I have to go, my mother died, I'm paraphrasing here, and left. My brother came home later that day and told my parents about it. About a week later, in the same class with the same teacher, the teacher got another call. Again, talked for a bit, and then the teacher hung up. He looked at the class and repeated what he had said the week before. I have to go, my mom died. My brother turns to the girl nearest to him with a confused expression and says something along the lines of, wait, didn't this already happen last week? The girl gave him a confused expression and said no. My parents remember my brother telling them about it previously. At least I'm pretty sure they remember, we still don't know how or what happened there. Nobody recalled the same teacher's mom dying just a week before. Pretty strange. I was out cycling late in the evening. The time was such that the sun had set but the stars hadn't yet come on. I'm cycling on a road I know. I know that ahead, there will be a blind turn. People usually go very slowly on that turn. I'm cycling, that turn was around 300 meters ahead. I suddenly get an image of me lying in blood. I stop on the side of the road. I feel like the word red car is being screamed in my brain right now. My head starts aching. I feel sick. I want to puke, RN. I don't know what to think, and I'm honestly surprised at the image of me lying in blood. Sure enough, just a second later, a red Hyundai passes by with crazy speed in that blind turn, because there is an empty road behind it, the speed must have been around 70 to 80. I look at his tire screeching, and I understand that if I had not stopped, I would have been hit by him at a very high speed and would be lying around in blood. This has never happened again to me. I don't even know what this was. It's unexplainable. I pulled over into a gas station and was sitting in my car because I was having a small panic attack. I looked out my passenger side window at a man who was walking by, and I saw this man's head snap toward me in an instant. His eyes met mine, but his face had morphed into the most frightening monster face imaginable. The monster face looked at me for like half a second and then went back to normal and kept on walking. I was terrified because it was so real. But it was so unusual that I tried to brush it off, as I was seeing shit. To this day, it still makes me uneasy thinking about it. This happened right after I got back from Afghanistan. I was diagnosed with PTSD and prescribed tons of medication. I think the monster's face was a hallucination. It relates to an experience that was the cause of most of my PTSD, and so it makes sense that it was a hallucination, but man, it was something I never experienced before or after that event. I had other types of hallucinations around this time, but none quite like that. This happened when I was approximately 22 years old. I moved into my now ex-husband's and boyfriend's house. It was built in the 1960s, so it's not particularly old but not new. I'm generally a very heavy sleeper. It takes me a long time to wake up. One night, though, I woke up around 2 a.m. and just sat up in bed, wide awake. I looked over, and standing above my ex-husband was a man. He had his arms behind his back and was just watching my ex sleep. He had a look on his face that was almost like huh. That's what it was like to sleep, almost reminiscing about sleep. After a moment, he turned and looked at me. He was so real, I thought we were being robbed. I turned away to turn my bedside lamp on and turned back, and he was still there. Usually, in the movies or whatever, that's when these apparitions disappear. I started shaking my ex awake, and the man was still there. Then, the second my ex woke up, the man vanished. I couldn't really explain what happened, so I just told my ex it was nothing and laid there in amazement for a bit. Then I was able to go back to sleep, no problem. I wasn't scared. Which is insane. Looking back, what was so weird was that he appeared in bright color, almost as if it were daytime. Even though it was pitch black in the room, I could see the vivid color of his clothing. He was wearing a green team jersey of some kind. He was a bit heavy set and balding, with a goatee or small beard. I always wondered if he was a former owner of the house or something. When I was growing up, my mom and dad owned a 32 Chris Craft boat. It was my dad's pride and joy. One of my siblings gave him a painting of the boat, it hung in their house for my single digit years until 1989. That's when they sold everything 
bought a travel trailer, and hit the road. They traveled until my dad developed Alzheimer's. He died in 2004, and mom died in 2014. One day in 2017, I was out junk store shopping. I walked into the shop, and there, on display, was the painting. I still get chills when I think of that moment. My legs went weak, and all I could do was gasp, grab it, and head to the counter to pay. I found out they had bought an estate's worth of paintings, some had been wrapped in paper since the day the collector bought them. The painting had been unwrapped and on display for about an hour before I walked in. To anyone else, it's just a picture of a boat, but I can tell it's my mom and dad, it's a sweet memory of them in their prime, and I am so glad it came to be mine. This happened about 10 years ago. I was 12 or 13 years old at the time, and my sister was 18. She always told mom and dad about strange noises that she heard at night. Like footsteps. My dad once or twice searched outside and found nothing. Actually, we all thought she was being paranoid. One day around midnight, I was in my room, and my sister came to me and whispered to me that there was someone outside her room. I got up and went to her room. I climbed on her desk and looked outside from the top of the window. My God, I will never forget that movement. I was looking right into someone's eye. Literally, the gap between our faces was less than a foot. I wanted to scream, but the sound didn't come out. I kind of fell down from the table, and my mom and dad came. We searched outside almost immediately and found nothing. Not a single footprint. It was a rainy day. I know this is a little thing. As a 12-year-old, it was pretty traumatizing. Sorry for my awful English. 15 plus years ago, I was babysitting a little girl, maybe 4 or 5 years old, and we were coloring and drawing pictures together at my parents' house. She didn't know what else to draw, so I said, how about you draw your family? I'd known her and her family since she was in the womb, she has bright red hair and has two brothers. She lives in a normal house in the suburbs. She's scribbling away, and I peek over, and she's got these little brown-haired people drawn and something else in the background, like a house with some trees in red. So I'm all, who's this? And she's like, that's me, when I was older. The girl had brown hair. I pointed to another brown-haired figure and said, who's that? And she said, that's my brother. I said, oh, which brother? Because she has two, and she gave me a name I didn't recognize. I asked her about another little figure, and she said it was her sister. I said, what, sister? Because she doesn't have a sister. She told me a name. I said what? She then explained, that was my family from before. I asked her, from before what? She said, before I had my new family. So I said, well, where is your sister now? And she answered, she died. I froze as she continued to tell me that her sister and brother died in the fire at her old home in the woods. Then she said, then I came to live with my new family. I packed up the crayons and paper and brought her upstairs because I was freaked out and wanted to tell my dad. He just shrugged and said that kids say weird stuff sometimes. I was driving home from work one night, and there was a beggar on the side of the road near the intersection. As he came to my car, I reached in my pocket and handed him the first bill that came out. I had received a bonus at work, so I was paying it forward, I guess. The guy looks at it, sees it's $20, says he doesn't feel comfortable taking it, and tries to give it back. I tell him to keep it, and he's extremely happy. So then he says, well, do you mind if I pray with you? I'm not ashamed of my faith, so I said okay, but I was still cautious. I didn't let the window down all the way and had my car, a standard transmission, in first gear just in case I had to peel out. So the guy starts praying, and it's very generic type prayers. Then he puts his hand on mine, and I kind of feel something. His prayers become very specific at this point. He mentions my wife, talks about our marital problems, and prays for those. He also prays for my daughter and for her overall health. He says amen, and I swear it's like he's coming out of a trance. He asks me, did you feel that too? And I'm like, yeah, I did. I wasn't even paying attention to the stoplight at this point. I just noticed it was still green and just drove away. Now I was married, but I didn't have a wedding ring because it was being resized, and there are no marks on my hand that show a ring was there. There was no kid seat or anything in my car that indicated I had a child, and there was no way in hell he knew my wife's name, what we were going through, or my daughter's health issues. I remember on my 18th birthday, my family and I went out to a steakhouse a few towns over to celebrate. After we were seated, I was talking to my older brother about something when the waiter came up to take our orders. It was then that I realized I was having deja vu and knew everything the waiter was about to say and everything my family was going to order, including what I was literally about to order. Now normally, 
I would just say to myself that it was just a regular case of deja vu, but after the waiter left, I knew exactly what everyone was about to say, including all of the conversations happening around me with the other people in the restaurant. This lasted for about 15 minutes. The entire time, I was literally freaking out because I had vivid memories of each of the conversations I had with my family at the time and all of the conversations I overheard. It was like I knew what everyone was going to say before they said it, and every time this happened, the more lightheaded I began to feel. I ended up going to the bathroom, which in this state I already knew I was going to do, and hyperventilating in one of the stalls, which I also knew was going to happen. After a few minutes, it went away, and I felt completely fine, like nothing ever happened. Years later, and it's still the weirdest shit that's ever happened to me. Technically, I did not see, but I experienced. This happened close to 20 years ago, and I was about 13 at the time. Pretty rural area in West Michigan, and had only been in our home for a few months. This is long, and I swear every detail is real. My younger brother and I were watching the Three Stooges late at night with pillows and blankets in the living room, laying on the floor. Mom heads to bed, knowing we will probably pass out there. We do at some point. Note, the main part of the house was in an open U shape. In the middle of the U is the stairwell to the basement. Top equals hallway with rooms, left equals dining table, right equals kitchen, bottom equals living room. The railing around the stairwell is in a literal U shape as well. My brother and I are at the bottom of the U, with a couch in between us and the railing. Fast forward to me waking up suddenly and feeling very alert. I look to my left and see that my brother is awake too, frighteningly staring at me. Footsteps are slowly coming up the stairs from the basement, and due to the oldish nature of the house and laying on the floor, I could literally feel the steps under my back. My brother whispers, who is that? And I just say I don't know and remain still. Keep in mind that there is merely a couch between us and it or whoever. The footsteps reach the top of the stairs, basically the kitchen, and then proceed across the linoleum into the first door of the hallway, a half bathroom. The door shuts, and the light turns on. Since we are still lying motionless on the ground, behind the couch, I only know that the light was turned on due to it being a single switch that activates the light and vent fan simultaneously, which we can hear. What seemed to be maybe 20 to 30 seconds go by, and no other noise comes from the bathroom besides the vent fan, no water, no flushing, nothing whatsoever. Then, the light vent fan turns off, the door opens, and the footsteps are now moving again. Back into the kitchen and slowly back down the stairs, only feet away from us. Needless to say, I wanted to shit my pants and cry. The basement door closes, and no other noise occurs, i.e., nothing exiting the home, which is accessed via the basement. My brother and I still lay there motionless, wondering if it was our mom or our third brother, dad was overseas for work. We didn't dare move and somehow eventually fell asleep again. Fast forward to our mom waking us up in the morning, she hurriedly asks, did either of you go into the basement last night? It turns out she woke up and heard every single thing that we did, from the moment the basement door opened to when it closed. And she confirmed that her third brother was in bed with her throughout the whole ordeal, he would often wake up from nightmares. What is also extremely important is that the basement door has a lock that, once opened, if you lock it, it will not close. In the morning, it was still locked. We never had an answer for what happened. However, a couple months later, during a garage sale, the nearby kooky looking but nice enough neighbor, who, of course, had an observatory built into his home, came by and chatted with my parents and welcomed us. My dad ends up telling me that, based on what the neighbor said, when our home was being built, the builder, intending to live in the home with his family, died during construction. On site. Cause of death? The builder fell head first from the kitchen and landed on his head in the basement, via the stairwell path. The rumor is that he had some help due to foul play. Finally, with my family being very religious at the time and my brother's nightmares and other distress ongoing, eventually my grandfather, a priest, performed an exorcism on our house. To this day, I wish I could read up on anything related to the deaths in that house. The only thing I could find were an adult and a teen being arrested for drug trafficking or growing. My uncle, now deceased, used to be a traveling salesman. When he was just starting out, I think in the early 80s, he was driving through a really bad storm and needed a place to stay. He saw a motel, the type with outdoor entrances to the rooms, and pulled off the highway. This was on a route that he regularly drove, so he knew which exit it was. Well, when he got up to the motel, the office was closed, so he started walking back to his car. As he passed a room, he noticed an envelope taped to a door that had Jay Lane, my uncle's name, written on it with a key inside. He was obviously weirded out for lots of reasons, one of which was that everyone who knew him called him Buddy, 
not by his actual name. But he took the key and stayed in the room overnight because the storm was so bad. The next morning, he just got back in his car and kept driving. On his way home, he stopped at the same exit so he could see the motel in the daytime. There was no motel there. Before going to bed, I take my dog outside. When I open the door, I'm frightened by a man standing in the hallway. He says he's just getting air. It was odd because I've never seen him before. I live on the top floor, at the end of the hall. No one but me would be there. I don't think much of it and go about my business. When I get back, he is gone. Next morning, my girlfriend wakes up to our apartment door wide open. I thought I didn't lock it properly the night before, so we just blamed it on myself, the door didn't always latch properly, and it was windy. That night, while putting my dog to sleep, I fluff her blankets, and out comes rolling one of our kitchen knives to the floor. Puzzled, I decide to check our pet cam, which looks over our dog's bed and living room. That night is completely missing. It still gives me chills.